Many households will be scrambling to find a few extra hundred dollars a week to pay the mortgage after the Reserve Bank's interest rate rise. RBNZ says the inflationary pressures of the cyclone rebuild is partly to blame. National is calling the 11th straight hike a kick in the guts. Our political panel this week is Labour Minister Michael Wood and National MP Paul Goldsmith joining us from Wellington. Good morning to you both. Morning. Morning, Melissa. Thanks for being with us. Now, it's not just people who have a mortgage that are going to feel this interest rate rise. It's going to put a squeeze on businesses too. Do Kiwis, uh, Minister, this is a question for you, do Kiwis, do you think, have to prepare themselves for the fact that job losses will now be inevitable? Well, the interest rate, rate rises that are likely to uh, uh, flow from the Reserve Bank's decision obviously do make life a, a bit more difficult for people and can have an effect, uh, an effect on the economy more broadly. Um, it has been forecast that we are likely to see an economic slowdown this year, uh, so it is possible that that will occur in some places. But we do start from a very, very strong position. We start with some of the lowest unemployment that we've had in our recent history. Um, we start with the government books in very good shape. So that means that we're in a good position in which we're able to support people as we do go through a challenging year. So things that we're able to introduce from the 1st of April, like increases to superannuation, increases to working for family, uh, continuing to the middle of the year to keep that half price uh, public transport and reductions mm. to fuel excise duty. We've got the ability in a difficult time to support Kiwis through that. Is that going to be enough though to comfort businesses who can no longer afford their costs and people who potentially will lose their jobs? Uh, no, I don't think it will be, and uh, I think the reality is it's going to be very tough times for many New Zealand families uh, and the small businesses in particular that are struggling to get by. You know, the, the real issue is that we've got the Reserve Bank governor with its foot on the brake uh, trying to cool an economy, but we've also got a Labor government that's, got, that's pumping the gas at the same time uh, with a lot of uh, extra spending and poor quality spending, and so those two things are fighting against each other, uh, and New Zealand uh, families are the ones who are facing the fallout for spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, more per, per week on their mortgages, and that flows through the whole economy. It's why you've got to have good economic management uh, from a government at a difficult time, and sadly we're not seeing that, but we've got hope uh, later this year. Well, what we have seen from Melissa, the government actually is a focus, what they say, on cost of living issues, and we've had an inquiry into um, the supermarket and competition there. Um, but, Minister, this morning, Consumer yeah. New Zealand is saying that they've found 300 dodgy supermarkets market specials since they asked people to report this in September last year. In July last year, a grocery commissioner was recommended. Why is it taking so long for Kiwis to see any changes at the supermarkets in terms of prices and in terms of that watchdog? Well, Kiwis do need to know that when they're filling up their uh, trolley with groceries that they are being treated fairly uh, by the two big companies who control the sector. That's why we have got a very significant programme of work underway in this area. We will be establishing a grocery commissioner, someone who is empowered to oversee that sector and make sure that there's fair play. But that we'll was announced in July last unit year, pricing. Minister. That's right. Yep. And we'll be moving forward with that shortly. We're getting the whole package together <laughs> Things take to, a make long sure time. That, uh, to make sure that it's, it's rolled out in a way that's coherent and works. We'll be introducing unit pricing. So one of the issues that uh, the Commerce Commission, uh, sorry, Consumer New Zealand has raised there is people not having real transparency about the pricing. There should be fair and transparent unit pricing. And we'll be putting measures in place to promote greater competition in the sector as well. So there's a really robust package that's coming here that will ensure that people get a fairer deal well, at, the, uh, at the checkout. But, but the issue is, of course, prices are going up generally because inflation is out of control, which is the broader economic challenge. Uh, yep, uh, some of those things that they're doing in the supermarkets may help. I mean, I, 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 I go there all the time. I'm a tightwad. I'm always looking for specials. And uh, yes, I've seen many examples of things that are so-called on special and more expensive than they normally are. And the, the ultimate solution to it, of course, is more competition. Uh, and, you know, you can regulate, you can do all these things. But, you know, when it comes to competition, the most important thing is to remove barriers to new entrants coming into the market. So you have more players, uh, and that should be the real focus of any government policy. Well, Paul, I mean, Kiwis will be thinking, OK, we've waited from July last year when these recommendations came out. How much longer are we going to be waiting? If we're still waiting at the election and National was to uh, get into government, how quickly would that happen? How quickly could you promise that would happen? Well, look, 
unfortunately we're waiting for everything. We're still waiting for the slow tram down Dominion Road. We're waiting for uh, uh, this government is uh, very good at announcements, very good at press statements, uh, not so good at delivery. Uh, and so uh, we'll be focusing on getting things done. And competition policy, like I say, the most important thing is to have an absolute focus on removing barriers to new people coming in and providing more competition. You know, the, Supermarkets only do these sorts of things because they know they can get away with it. Uh, if, if there's somebody down the road who's not doing it, who's, who's providing better prices, better products, uh, then that is the best discipline that any supermarket can have. Melissa, removing those barriers to competition is important. These issues have been around for years and nothing was done about them. Mm. Our government does now actually have a programme that's going forward to make sure that that happens. So it is something that we've seized and we want to make sure happens in the coming period so that Kiwis do get a fairer deal. We're talking about this um, more in around 10 minutes with Consumer New Zealand as well. I um, want to talk, Laura, though, last night, Jacinda Ardern, the former Prime Minister, of course, uh, with her valedictory speech. Uh, Minister, will there be any specific personal memories or interactions that you have had with her over the years that will particularly stand out for you? I've been asked this question a few times, and you know, Jacinda is someone who I've known for over 20 years before we were both MPs, and I always say with her, when people ask me about her in New Zealand or overseas, what you see is, is who she really is. And I think probably the, the, the memory I have that I'll just take with me all of my days was in the days after the March of 15th attacks, um, when a number of us were with the Prime Minister, the, the then Prime Minister, in Christchurch, it was the way that she was able to walk into a room and meet with families at a time of grief and trauma and uh, just absolute um, uh, an awful time. And she was able to stand with them and give them some sense of comfort and support in a way that I just don't think any other leader would have been able uh, to do. And time and time again, at some of our country's most difficult times, she was able to provide that leadership and give people strength to get through things that were really, really tough. Yeah, Paul, would you agree with that? I think that's probably the thing that, that, that I will remember most strongly. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, yes. I mean, she... Uh, yes, she, she had uh, certain real qualities, and uh, in a time of crisis, I think she did a, a great job at leading our country. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was similar. I haven't known her for uh, that long. Uh, we've had encounters, but I remember my uh, young girls coming down to Parliament once, and we were, you know, they're, they're loyal to, to their dad, and we're in a big <laughs> political fight, but then when they saw Jacinda, they went, they sort of turned to jelly and went to uh, uh, <laughs> So uh, uh, she had a special way with uh, um, uh, many people, and uh, she'll be missed. Um, of course, you know, politics is a tough, bruising business and, and you're ultimately accountable for what you've achieved and, and so her legacy will be debated for a long time to come. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it's always a special occasion when a Prime Minister gives their final speech uh, and Parliament should always honour the service of mm. any New Zealander who has put themselves in the frame like that. She is obviously leaving the uh, Mount Albert electorate too. Now, you're both in neighbouring electorates in uh, Mount Roskill and in Epsom. Do you expect that you will pick up constituent work from Mount Albert in the following six months before the election? Yeah, well, there, there may be a bit of that. Um, uh, you know, it's never ideal when, a, when an MP uh, leaves in, in an electorate, uh, but uh, others will be picking up the slack, um, uh, which is a real pity. Do you, have you had Look, to do that already, to Minister Wood, because uh, the Prime Minister obviously overseeing a very big electorate, but also um, her time as Prime Minister, were you picking up constituent work from Mount Albert already? Uh, no, no, certainly not. Um, while, while Jacinda was the MP for Mount Albert, despite being the Prime Minister, she was an active local MP and had a very active local office, so there was never any occasion where we were picking up work. Mount, Mount Albert constituents always had that support that they needed from her and her office uh, as a local MP. And if we need to help out a little bit in the next few months during that period before the election, then we'll certainly be able to do that. Is that a discussion we need to have going forward, though, where um, ministers or even the Prime Minister, where they are in a, a local electorate MP as well, uh, whether they have time to spend on those local issues and, and give it as much attention as other electorates might get. Uh, you have a number of portfolios yourself, Minister Wood. Do you feel you're able to give your constituents the same amount of energy as others do? 
You've got to be really disciplined about it. It's very important to me. My community of Mount Roskill elected me uh, to be their representative and to support them locally. So I make sure I carve out time uh, every week to be on the ground, to be connected with issues, to be meeting with local groups. It's definitely harder when you have portfolios um, in the government, uh, but if you remain focused on that and you make sure you put the time in, you can still be a really good local representative. Uh, and ultimately the test of this comes up every three years. That's our job interview, and people judge whether they think we've been doing a good job as the local representative. And yet, Paul, uh, Grant Robertson, when he stepped down from Wellington Central, said uh, it's a huge responsibility and it draws you away from your electorate responsibilities. That's why he became uh, just a list MP. Do you think there's a case for those uh, top ministers, top MPs in a party to just be list MPs to give more time to individual issues? Yeah, yeah look, I think every MP is different. Um, uh, some of them are obviously getting tired. Um, but, uh, look, I think what, what we're seeing from um, this government is, you know, every, every, like I say, every MP is different. Uh, sorry, my alarm was going off. That was, uh, I thought it my, might my have fault. been um, um, some constituents uh, on the phone uh, well, to you, <laughs> Now, yeah, well, it might, might have been one of the... Cause, look, I mean, I've tried very hard, but I can never win my seat for some reason. I don't know what it is in Epsom, but um, but, but I still have quite a few uh, constituent... Well, I have a few constituent inquiries, but, look, John Key managed to be a, a constituent MP, did a great job. Uh, I think um, being grounded in a particular electorate and um, uh, such as in a constituent and knowing the issues on the ground is actually a useful thing for any politician It's a, in a clearly important discipline yeah. uh, and uh, I think also important for a Prime Minister as well to have to go back uh, to the shopping centre and see the locals and engage yeah. with them uh, is an important part of our democracy. Uh, just quickly before we go, was there a big shindig last night? Um, are either of you dusty and in these situations who <laughs> provides the entertainment usually? Surely there was a send off for Jacinda Ardern? There was a really good send-off that just took place in the banquet hall here at uh, the Beehive. Really lovely, actually. Um, a lot of people from over Jacinda's life and career came together in one place. There's a wonderful photo of um, the last four Labour Prime Ministers, Chris Hipkins, Jacinda Ardern, Helen Clark and Geoffrey Palmer. So it was a really good way of sending her off. Um, no, I, I'm um, uh, awake, uh, pushy-tailed, <laughs> wide-eyed, and, and, and ready to head up to, to Napier for some uh, visits today. I, I couldn't afford to, to stay too late, but maybe a few others did. Oh, perhaps. <laughs> well, I wasn't, in, I, I, I wasn't invited to Jacinda's party, oh. unfortunately, but uh, we, we, we still were celebrating <laughs> another week where the government's... Uh, shambolic and falling apart <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the general sense is uh, that the momentum was on our side so we, we certainly uh, sat back and had a good uh, uh, period of reflection last night. Okay, so there might be some dusty heads on both Dreams sides. <laughs> Labour Minister Michael Wood and National MP Paul Goldsmith, thanks for joining us. Oh.